The Utopia of the Seas, the newest mega ship from Royal Caribbean, billed as the world's biggest weekend, but does that make it the best? I'm here on the ship right now, and in this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about some things I think they're doing really well on this ship, some things I think are kind of the same on this ship, and some things I think they could have done a little bit better. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I've been making travel videos for over 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. And I also wrote a little book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship. It's available on Amazon now. It's our final night here on Utopia. The ship is only about, what, like four weeks old, five weeks old right now. And an extra special thanks again to my friend Jesse who invited me to come on this cruise. We've been having a great time together, laughing like in the olden days. And we just sat down and went through our opinions of these topics that I want to discuss with you. And while I'm chatting about them, I'm going to show you a little bit around the ship, starting with my list of things that I think they're doing really well on the Utopia. We drove over to Port Canaveral from Orlando. We parked in the lot right here next to the pier, and we were on board the ship probably within 15 minutes of locking up the car. The embarkation went so streamlined, it blows my mind that they could get so many people on board so quickly. So boarding was super smooth. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen on other ships, but I just noticed that on this ship, it was exceptionally smooth. One of many things inside the ship that I really appreciate on this design over the other Oasis class ships is they have removed the bionic bar and replaced it with a really cool tiki bar called the pesky parrot. I'm not saying I don't like the bionic bar, but it's kind of a one and done thing. And honestly, there's not a lot of atmosphere. It's not really inviting to sit in there and enjoy your drink that the robot made for you. And the Pesky Parrot has a great atmosphere, unlike I think any other venue I've seen on Royal Caribbean. And I think it also has Royal Caribbean's first and only animatronic. Can anybody correct me on that if I'm wrong? There is actually a Pesky Parrot inside the Pesky Parrot. I really like this place, has a great atmosphere, and I think it's a great addition to the Royal Promenade and to the Royal Caribbean fleet. I hope that more of these show up on older ships that maybe are getting a renovation or as Royal says, an amplification. Another thing that both Jesse and I said we really liked on this ship compared to some of the other ships we've been on are the shows. All together on the newer Royal Caribbean ships, the level of talent and the level of show production is very high. And I think on this ship, that is no exception. But one thing that I really appreciate about the shows that we've seen on board the Utopia are they're not trying to tell a story. I've talked about this in other videos before about other cruises and other shows on other cruises. I appreciate going to like a Mamma Mia. I appreciate going to see Greece on board. What I don't think has worked very well for Royal Caribbean in the past are the production shows that they try to make with original music telling some kind of complicated story within 45 minutes. It's not about the talent involved. It's not about the sets. It's not about the costume. It's just how much story can you squeeze into 45 minutes? And on the Utopia, they're still using tons of technology, great costumes, huge casts of people, and the shows are purely entertainment. So there are feelings conveyed. There are moments that are more exciting. There are moments that are a little more melancholy, but there's no what I would consider unnecessary story. It's just people singing and dancing, entertaining, and having a good time and making sure we're having a good time. And I really appreciate that in this sort of 40, 45 minute cruise ship show format. I haven't spent a lot of money in the casino on this trip, but the reason that we're on this ship at all right now is because my friend Jesse is a high roller and she gets invited to come on these cruises from Royal Caribbean because they know she's gonna spend a lot of time in the casino. And in fact, on this cruise, she already has been invited on a next free cruise, so yeah that can happen. And she's been saying that she's really enjoyed playing in the casino. She also mentioned that the people working in the casino are very helpful. I think the size of the casino is probably the same as on the other Oasis class ships, at least from the ones I've been on. I haven't really noticed it being any larger or smaller. Okay, this is one thing I know a lot of people have been talking about, and this is, I think, a huge improvement and should be required on every cruise ship nowadays, and that is they have created uh, like an automated elevator system that divides how many people get in each elevator and how many floors it stops at. I think I've only seen this 
in one other place before, and that's the Coronado Springs at Disney World. So you pick your floor before you get in the elevator, and then the display tells you which elevator to get in. And that's how the system just make sure that everything's running smoothly. It's really a great system. Whoever invented this is probably gonna get filthy rich if they're not already. And if you are the person who invented this and is watching this video and you are filthy rich, do you wanna adopt a 50 year old son? One of the venues that's on every other Royal Caribbean ship, I think, which is the Vintages Wine Bar, there is no Vintages on this ship. However, the wine bar is now part of Giovanni's restaurant and the wine menu is even bigger than it is in many vintages that I've been in. So it's kind of nice to have the wine bar as part of a restaurant and Giovanni's has taken over the space that was used for Wonderland in the other Oasis class ships. And it's great because you also have a view out into the boardwalk and that's something that you've never had in another Vintage's wine bar. So it's no longer its own little venue, but I do appreciate that it's now part of a larger concept and has a very interesting view. And the other thing I kind of appreciate, and you know, don't hate me, but I kind of, kind of think it's a good idea that they're retiring the Wonderland concept. It is a cool one-time experience that might be a little bit too expensive. It's great for taking pictures and maybe impressing kids, but when I ate there, I kind of thought the food was just meh. You know, it's nice to look at, but I honestly didn't think it was very flavorful. So I appreciate that they've retired this concept and now it's just a great big Giovanni's and a wine bar. Okay, now I'm gonna go through a short list of things that I think are basically staying the same across the board, not necessarily better, but also not worse. And after that, I'll get to the things that I think they could have done better. So I think the water slides and pools on the Utopia are basically at the same level as on all the other Oasis class ships. I know that this sort of toilet bowl slide is supposedly faster on this ship and they've added a little section to the ultimate abyss slides that's different than on the other ships that have ultimate abyss but I honestly don't think it's enough to say okay these are better. I think you'd have to be like really a water slide and ultimate abyss aficiado, how do you say it, aficiado fan to want to argue with somebody that these are better. They're great and the other slides are great too. I think the selection of restaurants is great. We also think the quality of food that we've experienced here on board has been great and the service has been fantastic as well but that's kind of what you can expect from Royal Caribbean. Of course, there are sometimes exceptions, but all together, we've had great food, great service, and ultimately, a very high level of experience. And now I'm gonna get into the things that I feel like they could have done a little bit better, starting with the solarium. The solarium is the adults only space here on board and all Oasis class ships have this solarium space at the front of the ship. And I think of all the Oasis class ships that I've been on, which are Harmony, Symphony, Wonder, and now Utopia. So I haven't been on Allure or Oasis, but from all the Oasis class ships that I've been on, I feel like this solarium has the least character. It seems like there's something missing in the design. It's kind of just a big open space. And in some of the other solariums I've been in, there's more trees, there's more water features, there's more light up art features. They're just a little bit more character than this space. This feels almost unfinished to me. And there's something else that feels unfinished. I'm getting to that. Another thing I wanna talk about is the volume level on board. I know many people who are loyal fans to Royal Caribbean make fun of other cruise lines like Carnival and like maybe MSC for being loud party cruises. Well, the Utopia of the Seas is billed as the world's biggest weekend and there is a lot of partying happening on board. In fact, one of the signature parties, signature events and activities here on board happens tonight and it's basically a recreated frat party with drinking games like beer pong. So of course, when you look at that factor, this is a little bit different than some of the other Royal Caribbean ships I've been on, especially the small smaller Royal Caribbean ships because there is a focus on kind of, you know, getting 
drunk and rowdy. And in fact, in one of the Facebook groups that my friend Jesse is in from this cruise, people are writing that they've noticed that somebody has gotten arrested on board because they've seen security guards standing outside a certain cabin. Naughty people. By the way, in next week's Sofa Time, which I also filmed right here on this spot, I talk about some weird and also inappropriate people I've witnessed on this cruise. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you're subscribed, press that thumbs up, and check back next week. Another thing I want to mention, and this is going to, I know, ruffle some feathers, but there is a brand new experience on board here called the Royal Railway. That's really hard to say, by the way. Have you tried it yet? This is sort of a dinner theater experience where guests sit in a train car with a virtual reality kind of scenery happening around you and actors that come in and tell a story while you're getting dinner. I love all that. I love the concept. I would have liked to experience it, but we couldn't get a reservation. This was booked out a long time in advance and the capacity is very low inside. So it's kind of one of these things like at Disney that if you're not online at the exact moment that the reservations open up, you're probably never going to get inside of it. And at the moment, Utopia is only doing three and four night cruises, which means the capacity available for this experience is incredibly low. And I just think that's kind of disappointing because it is sort of a signature thing. It's brand new. And I think it's a, a thing that a lot of people are interested in, but hardly anybody gets to go to it. So I hope that if they're going to continue this concept on future Royal Caribbean ships, or maybe add it to some older ships that are getting amplified, I hope that they find a way to increase the capacity and make it available for more cruisers. I'm not saying I don't like the experience. I just don't like that it's so exclusive and hard to get. That's what I'm saying. And the final thing I want to talk about, and this is kind of a uh, big thing is that I feel like these cabins are really sparsely decorated and seems like they kind of saved money on the cabin design. I will of course be uploading a full cabin tour talking more about this but if you just kind of take a quick look around here it seems like half of the decorations are missing. There's no big mirror on the wall with cubbies to the right and left of it. There's no curtain to divide the bed from the sofa. There are plenty of charging possibilities in the cabin which which is a big plus, of course, but altogether, compared to so many other Royal Caribbean ships I've been on, I just feel like this cabin is basic. And for the newest ship in the fleet, that's kind of disappointing. Of course, what I think about the cabin is totally a matter of taste, and probably everything I've said in this video is a matter of taste. And if you have cruised with Utopia, or if you've watched one of the many videos already online about this ship, let me know what you think about the list, and if you think there's anything I should have added to what they're doing better, what has stayed the same, and what they probably should rethink or could do better on future Oasis class ships. And I'm really looking forward to reading your comments and interacting with you down there. Like I said, make sure you're subscribed and have the notifications on if you want to find out when I upload the next video talking about my experience here on the Utopia of the Seas. I'm going to be uploading a detailed look at what Coco Cay looked like 13 years ago compared to what it looks like today. Spoiler alert, it's very different. I know most of you know that, but I took the old video I made 13 years ago and went around the island and kind of did like a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm really looking forward to showing that to you. I'm gonna be talking about what I think is a camera right out here on the edge of my balcony. Tell you about some cabins that I don't think you should book on the Utopia and some cabins that I think you should and even more. Thanks for spending this part of your Sunday or whatever day it is you watch this with me. I'm Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guides. See you soon.